Okay, here we are again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to strip and clean and service your brake calipers. Now, I must stress from the outset that this is not something you should be attempting if you've not got any mechanical experience. This is something for the slightly more advanced DIY mechanic. Um, so, here we go. Brake caliper. First thing you need to do is remove said brake caliper. Most bikes, the calipers are held on with two bolts. Um, sometimes they're like this and sometimes they're radial calipers which means the bolts go in from the top here but in this case they're on the side. So we'll undo these bolts and remove the caliper. Okay we slide the caliper off. First thing to look at is how worn out the brake pads are. In this case there's loads on them because the bike's only done five or six thousand mile. If you see the little groove in the pad material for dispersing the water, when the pad material wears down to, to that level, it's fair to say that they're ready to be replaced, perhaps a little bit before that even. You don't want to risk the pad wearing out to the metal backing and uh, having it come into contact with the disc because that would absolutely ruin the disc. Okay, next thing to do is to strip the caliper. Okay, first thing to do is to remove the little R clip that holds in the retaining pin for the pads with this little pick. Okay, we're going to remove the brake pad retaining pin, like so. Lay everything out neatly. And then the pads in this caliper, they come out like this and then they slide off that pin. So that's one, and then that's the other, like so. Okay, underneath the pads is a little anti-squeal shim. Sometimes they can be a bit tricky to get out, but if you get a, a pick and get underneath one edge, prise it out until it comes out, like so. Um, with this caliper, um, it's not an opposed piston caliper. The pistons are just on one side. Some calipers have two or three pistons on one side or, and two and three on the other so that would be a this is a two pot caliper um, if it was a four pot it would have two other pistons on the other side and if it was a six pot there'd be three on each side so this type of caliper is a little bit more complicated than a four or a six pot because it's got this sliding mechanism here so what we do is pull those gaiters back slide this out um, this is in good nick because the bike's done very few miles but often it's the case that these are all dry and corroded and need to be cleaned and greased. Um, let's drop the caliper away for one second. There's also another little piece here that comes off and that's just a little seat for one of the brake pads so that comes off as well. Put that to one side down there and then the other bits of the caliper that need to be removed there's a little um, rubber gaiter here that needs to come off and then there's this piece here which is a it's what the, one of the pins of the caliper slides in the way to get this out is if you stretch it like so and then it'll pull through so we remove that as well okay and that's everything apart now ready to be cleaned okay so just using commercially available brake cleaner in a little pot um, give all the components of the caliper a good wash Okay, now we've got the front calipers apart, we'll take the rear one apart, which is ever so slightly different, but pretty much the same thing. Um, if we have a look over here, the brake pad retaining pin has a, um, a little blanking plug in it, which in this case has come out quite easily. Sometimes they can be a bit of a pig and you need to use an impact driver. But you remove that, and then there's an Allen bolt. Allen head rather on the end of the um, brake pad retaining pin. Always undo this before you take the caliper off because you'll never be able to hold the caliper hard enough in your hand to be able to undo this pin. So what we do is we undo that pin all the way and then we'll undo the retaining bolts for the caliper. Okay, the two retaining bolts with this type of caliper, one of them is just a standard bolt and the other one is threaded on one end but it's actually the pin that the caliper pivots on, on the other. 
So we remove those two and we slide the caliper up off and away to reveal the pads and everything. Loads of meat on the pads again like with the front. So we remove this pin that holds the pads in and then remove the pads. <coughs> and as with the uh, front caliper there's a anti-squeal shim in there and there's also another sliding pin with two rubber boots so we uh, release it from one side push it through and pull it out like that and then tuck this rubber boot in on itself and pull it out a little bit like the front so that's the caliper apart okay another thing quickly worth mentioning um, if you look here the caliper carrier um, isn't removable without taking the rear wheel out it's part of uh, part of the the mechanism that holds the um, wheel bearing and wheel spindle in so the cal caliper carrier will stay in place there's a couple of components to remove though there's another rubber boot which fits inside there like that and then there's another little shim that the pads rest on the rest of it can stay there sometimes you get a buildup of corrosion on this plate on this carrier that can cause the brake pads to bind so I mean this one's really clean but with yours you might find that when you scrape it lots of white powder will come off so a little flat bladed screwdriver or some sort of scraper and clean that off on both sides and you'll be good to put the, put the pads back in and stuff when it goes back together okay I'm going to clean this rear caliper now and then we'll talk about reassembly okay now I've cleaned the calipers off with some brake cleaner um, what I like to do is the calipers tend to go sort of very dry looking because the brake cleaner evaporates and, uh, and leaves them very dry so I use some silicon spray um, obviously I've got this plastic tub which keeps it away from the disc um, you don't need to do this this is just my preferred way of doing a caliper and I spray this silicon spray on and then the silicon spray the solvent in it will evaporate and it will leave a coating on the caliper and make the give the caliper a nice luster and protect it from the weather as well okay right then the calipers are all washed down now and cleaned and covered in silicon spray. I've got all the components of the calipers washed, dried, laid out, covered in copper grease. So all the components, backs of the pads are covered in copper grease. Um, on this caliper carrier where the uh, pads slide, that's covered in copper grease. Bolts that hold the caliper on, copper greased again. Um, pad retaining pin has also got copper grease on. Um, I tend to use, I mean I do use copper grease in a normal tub, but I use an awful lot of aerosol copper grease as well. It's great for the little components like the anti-squeal shim. And you can just lay it out on the bench and dust it with copper grease on both sides rather than trying to scoop some on your finger and rub it in. That's almost a top tip there. And the other thing that's great with aerosol copper grease is the pistons it's always a good idea to put a little smearing of copper grease around the pistons to protect them from the elements and aerosol copper grease is just fantastic for that because it gets right in all the little nooks and crannies and it's great at protecting them and you'll find you'll come in 4,000 miles to do another service that copper grease will still be there wash the caliper down and you've got bright shiny pistons still so that's a great tip that to get some aerosol copper grease and just coat the pistons in it keep the weather off them Right, so now it's time to reassemble the caliper. Okay, first thing with the reassembly is to slide this um, little rubber bush in. And they can be a bit tricky to get in. Uh, <coughs> what you can do, you can spray something on them. So, a little bit of silicon spray in this case. Just to make it a little bit slidier. And the trick is to stretch them out as much as you can and fold them over on themselves, like so. And then the hole in the caliper once you get them started, you can then twist it and feed it through into the caliper body, like so. And then once you've got enough of it in, you can get hold of the other side 
and pull it through. Simple as that. Then we've got the other rubber grommet here, the little gator which goes on there, like so. He says, give it a twist, make sure it's on properly, like that. And then the next thing to do is we need a little bit of waterproof grease just to grease the pivots. So there's no need to go mad, we don't need loads, but just where the pins slide. Got a little bit more for that one. In on the end of a flat screwdriver, twizzle it round like so. Caliper carrier, not forgetting the little uh, seat for the brake pad, covered in aerosol copper grease on both sides to keep the corrosion out. And that slides into there like so. Give it a squeeze. Let the, let the grease ooze out around the pin like so. And we've got the <coughs> anti-squeal shim. Now there's two sides to this. You see it's not symmetrical. There's two different shapes. Now the brake pad on this side of the caliper stays in the same position all the time. If that makes sense. And the pad on the other side, on the piston side, as the pad wears, the pistons come further out, it actually slides in relation to the caliper body. So this clip goes in this way and I'll show you why we get the clip in. Like so. On this squeal shim, there's a little ridge here. I don't know whether you can see it. The, the pad sits in and sits up against that ridge. So that's why it goes in that way and then this one is smooth so the pad can move when the piston comes in and out. So we've got the pads here. Now there's two squeal shims that go on the back of the pads as well. And I always like to put copper grease between, sort of sandwich the copper grease in. So take them apart and clean them. Copper grease on the back of the pads. So when the squeal shim goes on, there's a sandwich of copper grease between the, the shim and the pad. Okay, slide the first brake pad in. Like so. You must be careful as you're handling the caliper, just make sure that you don't get uh, any copper grease on the actual surface of the pad, because that's obviously not going to be good. And then the second pad in, like so. Down we go like that. Flip it over. We've got the retaining pin, which comes in from this side. Pay attention to the little hole that the R-clip goes through, so get it in the right place. And then you can easily line up the um, R-clip with it. And he says, and pop the R-clip through like so to re hold the retaining pin in. And there we go, that's the caliper back together. Cleaned, copper greased, ready to bolt on. Slide the caliper onto the disc. A little bit of a wiggle to... Uh, get it on the disc, it's probably worth mentioning, it's probably common sense, but when the caliper's apart, don't pump the brake lever because you won't be able to get the caliper back on because the pistons will come out. And then we bolt the caliper on, like so. A little bit of copper grease on the bolts, not too much. We don't want it oozing out everywhere. Right, that's it, that's it then. We'll torque up these calipers. Uh, as I've said in the past, um, I don't use a torque wrench for many things, cylinder head bolts, things like that. Um, I would strongly suggest if you're inexperienced to use a torque wrench to do up these bolts. Some bikes, they're really easy to strip. They go into an aluminium carrier, not a steel one. And uh, you can very easily strip them if you don't know what you're doing. So best thing to do is get your workshop manual, get the torque settings and use a torque wrench for them because it's obviously fairly safety critical how tight the brake caliper bolts are. So put the rest of the calipers back together now. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the rear caliper going together because it's a little bit different. Um, but that's it, job done. So as with the front calipers, um, this one all nice and clean, a bit of silicon spray on it. Um, nice shiny piston now, all nice and clean. I'm just going to put a little bit of copper grease around the piston just to keep the weather off it. As you've seen, everything else is laid out, ready to go. Similar story, got this little rubber boot. If we just fold it in half, pop it through the hole in the piston, 
and just let it expand on itself into position. Um, same as before, we're going to need some grease, a little flat bladed screwdriver. There's no need to go mad, just a little bit inside, just to help the pin slide backwards and forwards. And then we've also got on the caliper carry here, we've also got this little hole. Just give that a little bit of grease. And then there's a rubber gaiter um, which goes in this caliper carrier again. There's a little ridge on it, I don't know whether you can see. Um, and that needs to basically go inside. So if you hook one edge in, it's almost a bit like fitting a tyre. And then push it in. And if you give it a turn and give it a, a little bit of a pull, you'll see that it isn't going to come out. It's, it's sat in its little groove. Sometimes that groove is full of corrosion and you need to get a, a little scribe and scrape round in the groove and you'll get white powder come out um, and then wash it out with some brake cleaner just so the seal's got something to sit in. Okay we slide this pin through make sure the seal's up against it on both sides so it's nice and watertight. We've got this little anti-squeal shim it's not symmetrical like the front so there's a little lip here for the for the one pad on this side so make sure that that goes back in the right way but if you were paying attention when it came apart you'll remember which way it goes together. We've got this little shim here which has got copper grease on both sides that goes on the caliper carrier for the pads to rest up against like so and with the brake pads down here we have uh, three bits to them there's the pad itself there's a fiber plate which is a heat insulator and then there's the metal outer piece that retains it all together that keeps it all together um, again sandwich copper grease between them so the corrosion can't get in there so they all squeeze together like that so it's like a little sandwich sort of laminated together so you do that with both pads okay it goes together in a slightly different order to the way that it came apart if you remember i took the caliper off with the pads dangling on the pin the way it goes back together, which is easier, is to put the caliper on without the pads. Um, use the pin. I've copper greased just the threaded piece because of this bolt, because this slidey piece is going to go in where we put the grease, if you remember. So we slide that in first and just get it started in the thread. Now what we do is we get the brake pad and we lift the caliper up, hinge the caliper up slightly and just let the pad drop in to the caliper carrier and uh, it's probably difficult to see on camera but you can look through a little gap here and you can see that the pad is retained properly up against that little plate we put in so that's that one and then there's another pad here which drops in slides in the back and hooks on the caliper carrier like so and then what I do is, this is my personal preference, the way I do it is I put, then I put this bolt in, finger tight, uh, and whoop, that pad's dropped down, and then I put the pad retaining pin in last, like so. That way it's, it just makes it easier to get the pads to line up if you do it in that order. So I'll tighten everything up, and uh, we're pretty much done for the brake calipers. Next thing is going to be to change the brake fluid, but I'll show you that in a separate video. Thanks for watching.